What's going on guys? This is Matt. Welcome on back again to another Pokemon video. This week we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Well, for this video we're going to be doing something a little bit different. So, it's been on my mind recently that the Pokemon company, when it came to Generation 2, did a very certain non-playable character dirty in their fight. And a lot of people have complained about it over the years, but I wanted to shed a little bit of light on it. So in Gold, Crystal, in Gold, Silver, and Crystal, your final fight out of the whole game is against Pokemon Trainer Red, who you played in the previous generation of Pokemon games. His team consists of a Pikachu, a Venusaur, a Charizard, a Blastoise, a Snorlax, and an Espeon which per the manga would relate to when he was on Mount Silver because he borrowed the Charizard from Blue and the Blastoise from Green. However, and it also all correlates with Pokemon Red except for the Espeon. However, I feel like in order to do the fight justice, you would want to use some of Red's actual Pokemon from the manga, which would be his Poliwrath, which was his starter, his Pikachu, which he called going to Brock's gym. His Venusaur, which he got from Professor Oak. His Snorlax. His Gyarados, which he traded his Krabby for from Misty. And his Aerodactyl. Now, while he does have an Espeon, he does have a better Psychic type in Mewtwo. He's also got a Nidorino, a Diglett, a Sandshrew, a Bellsprout, a Fero, a Mewtwo. And then he's got Nido King and Nido Queen. So if you put all this together, what would Pokemon Trainer Red's actual best team wind up looking like? Well, of course you can keep the Pikachu because that's normally always in his party. You would want him to have a starter in Poliwrath, which okay, that's fine. And then you could always have his Aerodactyl there for rock and flying type coverage, especially for in place of, let's say Charizard. It's faster and it hits hard. It still hits hard, but it's a physical attacker instead of a special attacker. And then we can throw Venusaur in because he technically has it. And then I would want to throw in Snorlax for the bulk of the team. And then it's the final fight of the game and you want to present a bit of a challenge. So let's throw in Mewtwo. Now let's compare the team I'm proposing versus the one that they gave him. Pikachu and Venusaur check out. Snorlax checks out. Espeon would be replaced with Mewtwo, probably at a higher level. Probably just about the level of his ace Pikachu. And then we would replace his Blastoise with the Poliwrath. Probably make that a little bit higher than the Pikachu though. Seeing as that is going to be what he used since he was a kid. And he's had it since it saved his life as a Poliwag. And then for the Charizard replacement, I'm definitely going with the Aerodactyl in my version of the team. And so I feel like his team would be a lot more challenging and a lot more reflective and would still coincide with the yellow version games if you were to play it that way. But I would love to see Red use a manga team in a Pokemon game for an actual final fight. Because that would just be epic. And, I mean, yeah, you could ar make the argument, well, not all the trainers in that play are going to be using Gold's actual team. Which, fair enough. I mean, I don't know anybody who would pass up a Typhlosion. But there are plenty of people who would go, you know, I don't want a Sunflora. I don't want Pseudo-Budo on my team. I don't want Ambipom. And that's all fine. 
I just feel like I would want to actually be able to fight the red from the manga in the video game. And this video today was just to show you how I would do that. Thanks for listening, and you guys have a good one. Peace.